Today I wanted to talk to you about impact and about creating impact. Now, I believe that anyone who is articulate or who speaks well, who can take complex things and talk about them in a simplistic and easy to understand way, those people are given a disproportionate amount of credibility. Now, the, the idea of speaking to large numbers of people uh, is scary to many. Uh, some people tend to shine with it. Most people find it very scary. And to be frank, most people aren't very good. If you take dealing with small situations, even a, in a meeting of 10 or 20 people, you find that some people are very comfortable, others are totally uncomfortable. Some will sit in a meeting like that every day of their lives and never contribute anything. They're like a passenger. You have to wonder why they're there. Creating impact isn't just about how to speak to a thousand people at a, at, on a main platform at a, at a conference. It's also about how to just communicate. Now, I think a very simple key here to creating impact is not that you have to try hard or try lots of rules or be something that you're not. I think it's actually far more simple. I think it's about you being who you are. In other words, having a conversation rather than doing a presentation. Now, I don't care if it's a thousand people. I don't care if it's one on one or it's a group of 20 people. I don't care if it's a boardroom pitch and it's very, very serious or whether you're just giving feedback to somebody that for me, the key is conversational always works. A lot of people think there's many rules around how to communicate. There's a lot of presentation programs on the market that will tell you that, you know, you have to have a beginning, you have to have a middle, you have to have an end, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you told them, all sorts of structure and process. And yet some of the world's best communicators are people who just seem to be able to have a conversation with you. Now, don't get me wrong. I think you definitely need to know what you want to talk about. You need to have a core message. And I should be able to say to you at any point, what's your core message? You should be able to give it to me in a sentence. Or when you've spoken to someone, I should be able to ask them what your core message is. They should be able to tell me. But once you've got your core message and it's written on your heart, you know what you want to say. Perhaps there might be a structure in your head. But then I think you just need to communicate that in a very casual and relaxed way. Now, many people uh, go for a formal approach. They think that's better. But, you know, let's look at formality. Formality is to keep people safe. If you have a meeting with the Queen, it's about, it's very, very formal, but the formality is to keep her safe. It's so that everything is predictable. When you walk onto a stage, you stand behind a platform, you know, we put on our slides. You might introduce yourself and say, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Struan Robertson, and the presentation I have prepared for you today is one that I've entitled, How to Create Maximum Impact. Now, the funny thing is, most people aren't concerned who I am or the topic. They're already starting to determine whether I'm someone worth listening to. And when I'm tied down uh, behind a lectern and there's a, a series of PowerPoint slides behind me and I tend to be reading a script, I essentially get put in the same box as every other person they've ever heard at every conference. And how different would it be if you could just walk on and have a conversation, chat to an audience? People say that they want to be known as engaging, and yet they'll come off a stage and say to me, that, you know, the audience just didn't respond. I'm going to say, well, you didn't ask them anything. To engage an audience, you need to be engaging. So you need to ask them questions. You need to work with them. You need to share some personal insights, have a story. Many people, when they're communicating, uh, think that the key is, are they able to just speak well? But it's not just that. It's actually, do you have something relevant to say? Do you have something that you want to communicate? So I work with uh, many finance people. So the CFO might be delivering the, the numbers at the end of the year. And I'll say, so what's your core message? They'll say, well, I'm just delivering the numbers. It's a report on last year, how the year's gone, and looking at the forecast for next year. I'll say, no, I get that. But what is your core message? What is it you're communicating? And, and they'll kind of look at me oddly and say, well, it's the, the numbers. I say, no, no, no. You have an insight that no one else has. What, what are the numbers telling you? You know, you've, you've spent a year taking uh, all of the activity and results from the year. You have translated that into a series of slides which contain numbers and graphs. That's a translation, but a translation isn't enough. I need an interpretation. I need you to interpret that for me. What does it mean? What are you telling me? Should I be excited? You know, am I getting a bit of a kicking? Do you need me to focus in a particular area? Do I keep doing what I'm doing and realize the results will come? Or do I need to fundamentally change what I'm doing? There must, there must be a core. 
And then once you understand that you have to have a message and you're going to do it in a conversational and relaxing style, then you want to hold people's attention. One of the best ways to do that is to just be interesting. And you know, some people you meet aren't as interesting as, as others. I think the key to being interesting is whether someone is really interested in their topic. They've got to be comfortable, but if they're really interested in their topic and they're passionate about it and enthusiastic about it, then you tend to be fairly interested in it as well. You know, you could meet someone at a dinner party. They could be fascinated by the breeding habits of newts, which you've never been interested in. But because of their sheer passion, you get thoroughly interested, wanting to know more and more about it. So a key for me to be interesting is start with being interested. If you've been asked to speak about a topic which doesn't interest you, then you need to find indeed what is interesting uh, about it. Now, another thing, I don't uh, really think people should rehearse when they're trying to create impact. So if you're doing a speech at a conference, uh, or even if you're going to do a pitch, my view is don't rehearse. Uh, it might be controversial, but when you rehearse, your brain is going through this with you, your subconscious is going through this, and it understands what's right and what isn't, how you're supposed to say it, because that's how you rehearsed it. The moment you get in front of an audience and you start to uh, deliver your talk, the moment you go off piste or the moment you say something that isn't on your script, your brain is saying that this isn't right, this isn't right, that's not what we were supposed to say. And then you start trying to remember what you were supposed to say and you experience getting it wrong. Now, getting it wrong is the same as failure, if you like, and we avoid failure, which means you're standing in front of an audience having to deal with feeling like it's wrong. It may not be wrong, the audience didn't know what you were going to deliver. If you take a pencil, it's easy to break because it's so hard, it's so stiff, firm. If something's very malleable, you can't break it. I like to keep my speeches or talks always malleable and moderately loose so that I can uh, you know, change them and move if I need to. Now you know that when you have any conversation, you don't plan for it if you have a normal conversation, but you always think of things to say. When you don't think of things to say is when you feel pressure so I'll deal with that in just a moment. But if you're preparing some kind of talk, never prepare enough to fill the entire time. Always leave room for the fact that you will think of things to say on the spur of the moment. And what you think to say on the spur of the moment is normally some of the best stuff you'll say. It's probably going to be the funniest stuff you say. And the, because our brains are so good, when some really insightful point or, or, or example has come in, a case study that you're just you know reminded of in that moment, it's one of the best things you can possibly deliver. So leave some room for that to happen, for that kind of magic to happen, and certainly trust yourself. Now, just in terms of feeling at ease, the audience will get whatever you've got. If you've ever watched a speaker speak and they might be a bit sad and tend to start choking up when they're speaking about a sad situation, you find that you're actually feeling like crying as well. You get whatever the speaker has got. If you've ever seen someone who, you know, wants to be come across as confident and humorous and authentic and, and and what they actually do is stand up and they're very nervous and they're holding a bit of paper and it's shaking and you can hear their voice quivering. How do you feel when you're there? You feel terrible. You feel embarrassed for them. It's not what they wanted you to feel, but you can't help feeling it because you will always feel what the speaker uh, is feeling. You will experience what they're experiencing in essence you'll get whatever they've got. So the key is, whatever you want the audience to get, you have to go there first. You've got to get in a great state. You've got to, if you want energy, you've got to move around before you talk, get some energy, listen to some good music, run over some things in your head in order to create the emotional state you need so that you can deliver that to an audience. Now, PowerPoint. I think PowerPoint has one actual use, and that is to assist you to deliver a message to an audience. Some people use it to help them stay on track, and I guess it's okay for that, although having a memory strategy would be better. You know, find the chunks you wanna say, attach them perhaps to memory pegging, um, to, to a memory peg sequence. You can Google memory pegging, you'll find some great techniques on the net. They're very available and they're very common, easy to use. Uh, but some people also use PowerPoint uh, as a handout. Now, this is a crazy idea. When you're using a PowerPoint as a slide, there should be almost nothing on it. You know, one word is better than two words. One picture is better than 
any words. In fact, sometimes working without PowerPoint is even better. Some people just start with PowerPoint. They want to write a presentation. They open PowerPoint and think, right, what am I going to write? I make that decision much later. I decide what I want to write, what I want to say, uh, how I'm going to say it, what's my message, how I want to deliver the message. Then I determine whether PowerPoint is the right way to deliver it. And more often than not in my life, it's not. I would rather hold something, to use an analogy. I'd just rather talk about, you know, passionately about stories or examples than, than rely on a, on a slide. With PowerPoint, very, very simple. PowerPoint is there to assist you to deliver a message. If what you're delivering is not assisted by the slide that you've got, then you need to rethink that. If the slide is kind of more powerful than you, if the slide is the thing that's delivering the message and not you, then you have to ask yourself, why are you there? You know, if you go along to watch a live band, the fact is you want to go along because you want some level of performance. If you wanted to hear quality music, you'd listen to a CD. The quality will be much better. But when you go and see them live, it's not about the music quality. It's about the fact that you wanted to see them live. It's performance. When you're asked to speak, when you're asked to do a pitch, when you're asked to show up to a meeting and talk someone through something, they want a level of performance. Otherwise, they would have said, write something down and send it to me. Remember that. It's to perform. Never be afraid of performing. You're amazing. When you get in a meeting with your friends or, you know, catch up with them over a beer or over a coffee, you chat about a movie you loved or an experience you've had, you know, a new job, something that happened in the news, a holiday that's coming up, you talk with enormous amounts of passion and color and enthusiasm. You move your friends in order to take action, to come and do things with you, to go out with you, to spend money with you. We're very, very influential, but sometimes when we get on a stage, we lose that and we become boring and we, you know, we become dull. We're just afraid to show it. Can I encourage you that the next time you have an opportunity to speak, to stand on a platform, to contribute in a meeting, to talk on a teleconference, to take it by the throat, step into the space, deliver something bigger than you have before with some enthusiasm and passion, engage with an audience, get excited about what you want to do, show them the energy that you have. And I believe that your life and your career, your income will change dramatically because of the impact that you decide to put in to those levels of communication.